Ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome back to a beginner's guide to this time we are looking at Mew VMAX and what better time to look at it when it's just won the world championship. My god, cannot be stopped. <laughs> Simply cannot be stopped. So we are looking at the list that won worlds. Um, I am no expert on Mew. I couldn't tell you if this is the optimal Mew list, but it looks very good. So let's get into it, shall we? Of course, the deck is built around Mu VMAX. Mu VMAX has two attacks. Cross at Fusion Strike for two colorless. Choose one of your benched Fusion Strike Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. And Max Miracle for 130, two psychic cost. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So you aren't really using Max Miracle all that much. There are definitely options for it to be used. But for the most part, you are focusing on Cross Fusion Strike. What attacks are you using for Cross Fusion Strike? Well, one of those bad boys is Meloetta. With Melodious Echo 70x, this attack does 70 damage for each Fusion Strike energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Ideally, what you're doing is getting two energy onto the Mew, two energy anywhere else, and you're swinging for 280 with Meloetta. There is also the option to use Meloetta as the attacker. Put two energy on Meloetta, put a Fusion Strike energy on a Genesect, for example, just to help it against the Spiritomb, and then use Meloetta as a 280 attacker, also being a single prizer. Very nice, very delicious. We also have another attack in Genesect V. Most importantly is the ability, but we'll talk about the attack real quick. Techno Blast, two steel, one colorless, very rarely used as that. 210 damage, during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. That includes Mew. If Mew uses Techno Blast, that Pokemon can't attack. You will have to do the old retreat switch back in or switch retreat in to refresh the status of that. What else have we got in the deck? We also have Oracurio. Ability lessons in zeal. All of your fusion strike Pokemon take 20 less damage from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon. You can't apply more than one lesson in zeal ability at a time. Very nice to have because quite a lot of Pokemon are like, hey, I got 280. Hey, I got choice belt 310. We're taking out the Mew. Nope, 290, sorry. There's also an attack that is very rarely used, but I've definitely seen it used in a couple of situations. Glistening Droplets, Fire, and Colorless. Again, you're not using it on the Oracurio. You're going to be using it on the Mew. Put five damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. So if there's Pokemon on the bench that like have a little bit of damage on them, or they're very close to being knocked out, you could potentially use Oracurio as a multi-prize damage turn. It's very interesting. The mouse doesn't quite often work out, but... There's definitely applications for it, but it's definitely more there for the bench barrier. How is this deck working? We've just talked about the attacks and etc. First of all, the entire deck is powered by Genesect V. Genesect V has the ability Fusion Strike System. Once during your turn, you may draw cards until you have as many cards as in your hand as you have a Fusion Strike Pokemon in play. So your ideal start is whatever's in the active, full bench. Every time you use Fusion Strike System, and you can use... A fusion Strike system on multiple Genesects per turn, you can refresh your hand to six every single time. It is ridiculous. The entire deck is based on burning cards and just getting as thin as deck as possible to make sure that whatever you pull off the Fusion Strike system is what you need. It is a ridiculous deck. And I've mentioned the Fusion Strike energy. I'm going to jump to that real quick. The deck runs two energy. We know double turbo energy. As long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides two colorless energy. The attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 20 less damage to your opponent's Pokemon, which is very important to remember when you're doing damage calculations with Mew. And Fusion Strike energy, which is the big one. This card can only be attached to a Fusion Strike Pokemon. If this card is attached to anything other than a Fusion Strike Pokemon, discard this card. As long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides every type of energy but provides only one energy at a time. Prevent all effects of your opponent's Pokemon's abilities done to the Pokemon this card's attached to. So, one of the big counts that just got printed for Mew was Spiritomb. Spiritomb says all basic Pokemon V in play do not have abilities. Fusion Strike Energy says, no, we don't listen to that. We don't care because it's an effect. So if you have Fusion Strike Energy attached to your Genesex, they can still use Fusion Strike System. Every time something is printed to counter Mew, it says, no, I've got this to help out. And the Spirit Tomb is also countered by Ice Q, but Ice Q isn't in this deck. So it's interesting it's not in there. It's actually very interesting it's not in there. Anyway, how are we finding Pokemon in this deck? Well, first of all, we'll talk about the balls. We always talk about the balls. Ultra Ball. You can use this card only if you discard two other cards from your hand. Search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. If nothing else, very good for thinning the hand to use a Fusion Strike system to keep digging through the deck. Nest Ball. Run two of those. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. Again, potential to fail it just so you can 
burn through the deck, but ideally you want to be using Nespol to fill out the bench anyway. And Battle VIP Pass. You can only use this card during your first turn. Search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon, put them onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. If you open with Battle VIP Pass, you've already won the game. It's uh, <laughs> it's how it feels anyway. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, what other ways have we got to search things out? Well, we haven't got too many, but we do have an interesting one. Fans of coin flips will love Cramomatic. You can only use this card if you discard another item card from your hand. Has to be an item card. Always remember that. So the Battle VIP Pass... Later on in the game, do become chromomatic uh, fodder. Flip a coin if heads, search your deck for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. That's right, you can search for any card that you like. It's kind of insane. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. We have uh, three ways to switch in this deck. We have switch cards, switch your active basic Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. If you do heal 30 damage from the Pokemon you move to your bench. Important to note, it is basic only. We have escape rope. Each player switches their active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. Your opponent switches first. Very nice to have. We also have Palpad in the deck. Shuffle up to two supporter cards from your discard pile into your deck. Important to bring back the lesser sparkles, the bosses, etc, etc. We have Lost Vacuum. You can use this card only if you put another card from your hand into the Lost Zone. Choose a Pokemon tool attached to any Pokemon or any stadium in play and put it into the Lost Zone. Quite a few applications for this, but one of the big ones is because the deck runs Path to the Peak, but we'll get to that in a second. And finally, I've mentioned you're going to be struggling to hit some numbers sometimes, you know, going down to 190 with double turbo, doing 210 anyway, Technoblast. We have a Power Tablet. During this turn, your Fusion Strike Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Swinging for an extra 120 sometimes. It is kind of insane. Kind of insane. We've mentioned stadiums. We've got four in play. We have Path to the Peak. Pokemon with a rule box in play. Both yours and your opponents have no abilities. That includes your Genesex. So sometimes you want to play that down to end the turn, knowing you've got a Lost Vacuum in hand. Once it's back to your turn, Lost Vacuum it back up, go back to drawing. It's very important to counter quite a few uh, counters to Mew as well, such as Drapion. We have Lost City, another big counter for Drapion. You only want to let Drapion swing once. Whenever a Pokemon, either yours or your opponent's, is knocked out, put that Pokemon in the Lost Zone instead of the discard pile. With Drapion being such a big counter into Mew, you want to make sure there's no way it's coming back. And finally, Crystal Cave. Once during each player's turn, that player may heal 30 damage from each of their Metal and Dragon Pokemon. There's only one Metal Pokemon in this deck, and that is Genesect. It's an interesting add. I don't think I've ever seen a new list running Crystal Cave. I've got to imagine it's so you can use the... Genesex is kind of a, a hit absorption and not worry about them getting knocked out too quickly. It's it's an interesting tech. I actually quite like that. It's very strange, but I like it. Uh, on to tools. We have Box of Disaster. This is the, if you uh, saw the Charizard EX video that I did earlier in the week, this is the one I was trying to talk about. If the Pokemon V this card is attached to has full HP and is knocked out by damage from an attack, uh, from your opponent's Pokemon, put 8 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Again, good guard of what counter. I didn't realise it was Pokemon V only, so I think that's why Vengeful Punch is like a bit better than Box of Disaster, maybe. Uh, two Choice Belts, the attacks of this Pokemon this card's attached to, do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon V. Very important to note, it is V only. The X is a safe. And I mentioned uh, all the search in the world. We've also got this bad boy, Forest Sealstone. It gives the Pokemon V it is attached to access to a V-Star power called Star Alchemy. During your turn, you may search your deck for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. That's right, any card. So you can find that Battle VIP pass. You can get those two more Genesect. You can keep going. It is ridiculous how quick this deck runs through. Um, important supporters. We have four. At a lesser sparkle, choose up to two of your Fusion Strike Pokemon. For each of those Pokemon, search your deck for a Fusion Strike NG, attach it to that Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. Very important if you're a new Mew player, the text is important. Choose up to two of your Fusion Strike Pokemon. You have to declare your choices first. Because if there's only one in the deck, that can influence you on which way you go. So, it is very important to make sure your opponent, if you're playing against a uh, Mew player, make sure they declare which Pokemon they're going for so they can't change. Because if they do a deck search and then go, oh, actually, that makes sense. You know, it's important. Just keep an eye on that one. Two bosses orders. Switch in one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active spot. One Iono. Each player shuffles their hand and puts it into the bottom of their deck. If I play, blah, 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 blah. each player draws a card for each of the remaining prize cards. And judge. Each player shuffles their hand into their deck and draws four cards. Just very nice hand disruption cards. Genesect can draw out of like any small hand disruptions anyway, so it's kind of good. So yeah, um, as mentioned, there's not much I would change in this deck because I'm not much of a Mew player, so I'm not very good with this deck, if I'm absolutely honest. But the one potential addition is Ice Q. 
Ice Q has the attack Block Slider. This attack does 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon for each Fusion Strike energy attached to all of your Pokemon, so that can do up to 160. It's a nice little snipe to take out some of the comp phase, to take out that Spiritomb I mentioned earlier. Any small basic Pokemon on the bench, just to take them out if they're going to be an, an issue. It's very good. It's very good to have, I think. It's a, it's a very good tech option. Quite often, I'll see, like, Meloetta and Ice Q maybe drop the Oracurio. I can see all three being in the deck, to be honest, but yeah, that's... That's kind of where it is. So that's Mew. Um, again, I'm not great with Mew. I, I can't tell you how to play this deck. I, I'm very simple, but it's a good look at the winning list. The fact it didn't run Ice Q is quite interesting. The one path, uh, one Crystal Cave tech is very interesting as well. I think it's a, it's a cool list. I'll definitely give it a try during this week. But that'll do it for this video. If you've got any suggestions for future deck videos, please let me know in the comments. All my social media links are in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.